Well, hello there, friends and family. It has been a while since I've talked to you. And I do hate that. But that's what we're out here doing. We're walking about and we're going to talk about it. And we're going to share some real life. Maybe you'll share some of your real life over the last week. You know? Because, you know, it's just been one of those weeks where you just can't seem to uh, make it all right and get ahead. So what do you do? Well, you don't do like whiners. And you don't do like some people do and blame it on all others. You suck it up. And you get by. Well, that's what we do, us older people. We just get by. So we're going to walk about. We're going to show you in the gardens. You know, our plantings. Show you where you are. I'm sure many of y'all beat me up about it. But that's okay. You're not down here. And you're not dealing with it. So let's get to it. So the first place we're going to go to our little small planting of rattlesnake pole beans. And you can see, they're looking pretty dismal. Yep. They've had a few beans in that. But you know, between the leaf cutter or wasps and bees and, uh, severe temperatures I mean my lord I was looking today on the climate site and we've had I think a month of July we had 28 out of 30 something days in the mid to high 90s and that's uh been anywhere from oh 110 119 degrees heat index and these poor old beans have suffered even though every about two days I water the stew at them but they're just not making it and that's just the way it is our little popcorn that we put in the pot here just so you could do something with your kids and grandkids it's coming along fine it's tasseled out you know got some small ears on there and here again we've been wearing it twice a day I'm not sure we'll get much from it but that's okay it's not like we need a lot and then the cucumbers you know we had the pickle worms come through well first we had the army worms remember those then we had pickle worms and i'm gonna tell you what in all my years of growing here in deep south i've never had pickle worms the likes of which i saw this year i'm not sure why that is but it was they not only drilled holes in my cucumbers, they drilled holes in my vines, kill them. You can see where, right there, I actually trimmed that one off. I've never seen that before in my life. You can see some of the remnants there on that leaf, a little poop. But, they've gone now and maybe with a little bit of TLC water these will come back but you can notice here on the leaves and I don't know if the camera will pick it up but you can see some white but you can also see all those yellow splotches well folks that's the effects of powdery mildew and uh, you got a choice to make here. 
you can just let it go and hope whatever variety of cucumbers you got is resistant to it and can grow through it and so far these are still surviving albeit they look sort of sad and what we're going to probably do tomorrow afternoon we're going to hit these with uh, first of all some peroxide that's hydrogen peroxide and water to kill it and then the next evening and afternoon we're going to hit it with some fungicide it's not that I need more cucumbers because I got you know three or four backed up in the fridge right now. It's just because you know I'm stubborn and I want to see if I can get them through till this fall. And there's one up here to the clothesline planting, and that we still got some tomatoes coming on. On these beef masters. You see that baby right there? Now, because it's been so hot, and I'll be honest, old Mr. Tom ain't felt much like getting out here, especially since my son got COVID-19. Of course, he's over it now, hopefully. And I sort of switch gears on that, and I let things go. You might say, well, that was silly and stupid. What about your food? You need food. Well, I need to eat down the food I got. But I've got tomatoes coming on still. Yep. I think right now, looking at these, and got some blossoms over here. Of course, I think today we got up to 96. 115 heat index. Not sure if those will make or not. Oh, got another one right down there. And I got a pile in the fridge and another pile on the counter. I'll show it to you a little bit later. Now the rattlesnake Kentucky Wonder pole beans, they've been pumping it out. We picked them three times. And I got about all I need I still had leftovers from last year but we're gonna get out here tomorrow morning and pick these jewels yes we are now here again so Mr. Tom ain't felt too good I've let some go a little bit too long like that one right there now what you want to do there is you want to pull that off pull the stem off too because if you don't and there's another one down there these will start to uh, not putting out any more blossoms and blooms and production will stop so tomorrow morning we'll get all that cleared up I'll actually bring out here a pair of scissors I'll trim them all back We'll get dry ones for seeds because we're trying to develop this variety. Because I've never had a more uh, juicier bean than this cross. We'll just, you know, keep growing it and see what happens. But here again on pests, I've never been besieged like I was this year. From everything from the army worms, then the leaf cutter wasps came, and they're just not pests, they're a beneficial insect because they pollinate your crops. So be careful before you spray. Oh, the bell peppers in here, they're still pumping out a few. Yep, got some more in there that have uh, dried up on us. But that'll be seed for next year. And if you're not saving seed, folks, 
Might want to rethink that decision. I'm not too worried about that, these crops this year. What I'm worried about is seed for next year. So I'm okay with all that. Now, you'll see some tomatoes here in a compost row where we do the layered compost. And they were uh, attacked by birds, squirrels, raccoons, what have you. And a lot of people have told me, well, I would just cut the bad places off. And I'd eat them anyway, or I'd have canned them, or whatever. Well, I'm going to tell you something right now, so you can think about it. And you can do it whatever you want to do. There are several things you can pick up from birds, uh, viruses, that will transmit to humans. Uh, any of y'all ever heard about the avian flu? Yeah. And once a bird pecks one of mine, I already know that. Virus, it doesn't stand there right in that little hole. It'll start growing and spreading through the fruit. The same thing with any type of bacteria. No. Nope. I just go ahead, pick it off, and make compost. Now, why am I putting them like I have here that I'm showing you? Well, I'm going to let them rot down. And I'm about to put more uh, grass clippings and leaves over now, next year, I'll have tomato plants coming up here and what will be some very rich and fertile soil along this row of decaying grass clippings and leaves. Now this garden plot here, this is one of those uh, times in the south somebody would say, God bless your soul, Mr. Tom. It just got out of hand with everything that was going on, tree trimming, the drought we're in, temperature, I didn't have the mulch to lay down to block the weeds, and it got out of hand. So eventually, I'll take the fence down. Now that ochre over here at the end, we've been getting, oh, well, four, five, six pods of okra off it a day and we have to save it up for a day or two just so i can get a mess now i can price them up if y'all want but my problem is i'll eat two or three or four before i ever get in the house fresh and if you're not eating fresh okra straight out of the garden then you're missing out now Walton butternut didn't do much this year. Just too darn hot. And that, and I could replant them. Got plenty of time now. Now here again, that comes back. I just don't need the food. I got one nice one right here. And we're just letting it mature. And it's getting close. You know? That there first leaf is done dried. What was a tendril has dried, and I can go ahead and clip it way up here, and it'd probably be fine. And somehow, the pickle worms didn't find it. Thank God for that. And I'll enjoy that this winter. You know what? I've had those things last almost a year. Then you look across this here deer fence I put and I got morning glories climbing all over it and I let them go because you know be honest morning glory flowers pretty cool and uh, the burpee garden beans they pretty much had as my father 
and grandfather would say the schnitzel. Not sure what schnitzel means. And I'm letting them go to seed. Yep. Got some dry ones right there. Because I've got plenty of beans. In the three pickings I've done off those uh, rattlesnake uh, Kentucky Wonder Cross, I have put in the freezer eight jam packed bloating quart bags, which for me is about, oh, eight meals. Six, if I'm extremely hungry. And I already had leftovers from last year. And of course, tree service left me some wood here that they forgot about, but that's okay. We'll have a nice little fire here one Saturday evening. Yeah, maybe Sunday evening. The raised bed. Hmm. Multiplying onions, still doing good. Oregano. Thyme. We still got carrots that we planted from last winter. Yes, we do. Now, some of y'all may say, they're not going to be too tasty. And yep, they're a little small. You gotta cut them off right there. Yep. See where they're nice and orange? And then up here they're green. We'll come back and get him later. And those uh, volunteer tomatoes that we snuck out of the worm box. We've got a tomato right here. Yes, sir. Sure do. And if that's all I get, that's all I wanted. Cause I'll scoop the seeds out of that baby. Of course, I'll eat it. And if it tastes like crap, won't bother. If it tastes tasty, I'll scoop out the seeds. I'll put them in a little uh, plastic container, let them ferment for you know about seven ten days. Then I'll take them out, wash them all off. Let them dry. Now I'll put them up next year. We'll see what we get next year. But they're growing. But something I want you to notice here. You see the shade? Yeah, I knew this was going to happen. But because of time, restrictions, wanting to get trees done and all that, I really didn't have no place to put these plants. So I put them in this raised bed, and I already knew it was a little too shady. And because of that, they're not too bushy. And they're getting long and lanky. They're still going to have a few fruits. And that's something to remember on uh, your plants. Look at the sun requirements. If it says six to eight hours, you know, probably need six to eight hours of direct on it sunlight. This bed here right now probably gets about two hours of direct sunlight. You can see some more blossoms right here. And we're going to give her a little shake. You know, pollinate that blossom. A lot of people think you need bees with tomatoes no you don't they're one of those perfect balls they got the male and female in there if you shake them enough they'll pollinate themselves garlic chives they're looking good let's go over here and take a look at what was a beautiful pot of uh, oregano not that I need it anymore. And what happened here? 
I came out every morning picking off and killing army worms. I didn't know some over here. And with about two days, those army worms came over here and basically ate this to the ground. Yep, don't play with the army worms. If you ain't willing to get up early in the morning, get out and smush them and pick them off and kill them, and just understand this is what happens. Yes, sir, it does. And of course, I still got some cleanup to do from the tree service. I got some of it done. With it 96, 97, 98 heat indexes, 110, 115, 119. That's all in the shade, folks. That ain't in the sun. It's been tough. And I'm just not as young as I used to be. Now, on Pepper's over here, he picked a few. Got some nice looking cow horns there. Yes, sir. Got some nice ones. And we got some ant eyes here. And they've been struggling in the heat. Yep. And I picked and ate one of these orange lunchbox. Now, the red lunchbox over here, I ain't had the first one to eat. I've just been trying to keep them alive. Because if I can keep them alive through the drought and through the heat, when the temperatures start to subside a little bit and the rains come back, oh, I'll be blessed with a pile of peppers. And I still haven't planted nothing this uh, tire planter. It's the wrong time of year. Now, a couple of days back, I picked all my Atkinsons off of this. It had a few, and I got another one ripening up there, and another one there. And grand, plant looks pretty sad. I admit it. That's for Tory Lee Spot has really, really wreaked havoc. As it's done over here on the Beef Master. And there is no tomato plant, and I've done my research on this here of late, that has any resistance to spatory leaf spot. Nope. That's why. It's one of the most devastating diseases your tomato can get. Yep. But it's still got some tomatoes on. And they're gone. And up here, not looking too sad. We're just going to let it go, like I told y'all before, and see what we get. And what we get, we get. You see, y'all, at some point in time, during the growing season, whether it's pests, weather, climate, drought, whatever, you have to make a decision. Are you going to keep fighting it? Or are you going to say, you just ain't going to win against uh, God and Mother Nature. And you're going to pack it up. And that's where I am right now. That's, you know, I've been watering every day. But I, whew, I can't wait for my water bill to get here. And that. I'll show you how dry it is. And this is one of those events that only happens during extreme uh, high temperatures and drought. Let me show you. You can see it real good here on this space where there's no grass. Now, I don't know if you can see them all. Hope you can. But just all over. This entire space is small, underdeveloped pecan. 
there's literally a couple hundred here not counting what's out in the grassy areas what's that from well lack of water and extreme high temperatures yep and the plant to survive or the tree excuse me has got to decide what's it going to do produce nuts or try to survive and what they're going to do first they're going to drop their nuts now I haven't seen it yet this year I'm not saying I won't but I've seen it get bad enough drought wise and temperature wise that they'll start dropping leaves so far they haven't done that now I've even seen that with my oaks they'll get to a point where it's been so hot and dry down here they'll drop their acorns and if rain don't come or I don't water them they'll start dropping leaves and it was oh, four or five years back when we were in extreme drought that happened now, I had to come out here and put one of those, you know, oscillating sprinklers out and uh, water them because the leaves were falling. They started about this time of year, mid-August, all the way into mid-September. And Lord knows, I don't want my oaks to die. I don't want those pecans to die either, but the push came to shove. I'd rather save the oaks than save the pecans. Now over here in the south side bed we got something I've noticed over here and you can see this ochre is all limp and wilting. It ain't because we ain't watered it every day. Trust me. We have. Turn the soaker hose on for about an hour every morning. And then uh, we'll kick it on here another hour once the sun gets off these. It's just, they can't pull enough moisture out of the soil to overcome what they're losing. And this is what any plant will do. They'll drop, droop their leaves to cut down the surface area. But something I want you to see. See how droopy that one is? Look at this tomato plant. This is a husky cherry. It ain't having no problem. And it's right beside the okra. See that? And this is what you want to notice. On your place, in your gardens. What can take the drought? And what can take the heat? So I'm going to keep monitoring this tomato and see how it performs. Now granted, hadn't had the first tomato, it has had a lot of blossoms, but no tomatoes yet. But here again, if it survives till temperatures cool down, I'm sure it will. And you know what? You'll see it right here. Now this one here. A park swapper uh, volunteer. Mm. It's been ravaged by spider mites. And that. It's got some blossoms on it. Here again. It too has not set any fruit. And we'll see if it makes it. My one squash plant, even though it don't look bad, it's had nothing but male blossoms on it. And the reason for that, it just don't feel good about trying to produce fruit right now. In extreme conditions, it's going through. And these uh, rattlesnake pole beans here, you can see the leaf cutter wasps have just decimated 
uh, these bean binds. Now I'm not sure they'll pull through, but they're here. We have soaker hoses running front and back. They get watered just like all the rest of this every morning and evening. We'll see. And lastly, we got this here uh, sun sugar. And you can see, it's not doing any of that wilting or anything like the okra. Got some blossoms. But here again, no tomatoes. Haven't seen a one from that. But there you are. During the heat of the heat in deep south. And during the drought. And to be honest, my part of the country, uh, the Piedmont Plateau, especially where I'm at, has been an extreme to severe drought. And you can look this up for many many years now where are the kitties and the kitty crew well they were here this morning when I gave them their breakfast yep and there was the goo of course Elrod's been sticking around a whole lot more every day now and spooky and Spooky's got darn right a lot more, uh, you might say, uh, friendly. Ooh, look at that fig. It's almost ready. Got a little bit of give to it. Maybe we'll get it for the birds. And that. I've got a couple left on the counter. Oh, there's a nice one. Oh yeah, that one's perfect. Let's take him off. I want you to look at that. Mm-mm-mm. Here, let's give it a taste test. Oh my. That is so darn good. Even though it's hot, and I should have took it in and chilled it, would have been all the better. That is still tasty. Whew. My lord. So y'all, I know I hadn't uh, published a video since Wednesday, so I wanted to come to you and give you sort of uh, what, where we're at, what's going on. And not only with the drought and the heat and, you know, the waves of pests, disease, there's been several other things that I've been dealing with. And I'll say this. It ain't about pity and sympathy. What I'm about to tell you is just about to tell you, you know, reality. Now I'm going to tell you that hopefully you also are prepared to get over these things. Now, let me tell you something about getting old. The older you get, Coming out here and dealing with mid to high 90s, uh, mid to high 110 degrees, you know, 110, 119, understand, no matter how bad you think you are, you're a fool if you come out here and try to push through it. And of course, I've been a fool several times this year and it always winds up with me 
losing two or three days just to recover. Thankfully, uh, nothing else happened. Secondly, I've uh, been having some problems with coyotes. They're really, really, really bad in this area. In fact, about July 2nd, we got an alert that coyotes were coming into the neighborhoods, not only in this area, all the way up in North Alabama. And uh, they were not only attacking, but eating, of all things, cats and kitties. And we've had two nights where they've come in here. Yep. One of which was Wednesday night after I released the last video. And I hadn't seen Spooky or Cleo since then till Friday. Then I saw him. And I was extremely worried. And Spooky, he was just crying, rubbing all on my legs. I was just like shocked, because you know how he is. He don't want to get within five yards of me. Cleo ate and went running back to her kitties, which are not here. They're at neighbors. And then, uh, of course, Elrod, he's been here every day now uh, since Wednesday. Yep. I guess he figures it's safer here with Mr. Tom than it is out there with him roaming around. And of course, Magoo, he don't ever leave. He's my buddy, my pal, stays right around. Now, I'm sure, because it's right now 97 in the shade, about 116, 118 heat index. I think the UV index is extreme at 11 and that they're in the shade probably you know curled up under the house or under these steps right here uh snoozing because that's what kitties do and that and we had some other things happen uh you know it seems like It seems like you're going to have things hit you at the most opportune times. And I know my air conditioners are getting on up there in age. I actually couldn't remember when I last replaced them. And I have window units. Uh, two in front of the house. One's in my son's bedroom, or what was my son's bedroom, and then one in the back of the house in the den kitchen area. And of course this week, uh, the biggest one is back in the den, and that. It decided. It would just shut down. Kick the breaker and shut down. I hate that. Because you know what? It ain't that I can't buy another one. I can. It's just everything. Every last thing. I don't care what. Seed, soil, fertilizer. Whatever. Everything right now is 50 to 100% or 200%, God knows what, more expensive during this COVID-19. Yep. And so I did everything I could trying to revive it and currently it's limping along but I didn't understand I was going to have to break down and get another one and that's coming it's supposed to be here on the 17th and I think you know today is what night so we got eight days that's okay if this one dies again we'll just leave her down and then we'll get by that's the important thing that I want to stress right now many of you are my age or close to it or older and we all can remember 
when many of us didn't even have air conditioning. Yep. And that was true even down here in the south. We didn't get air conditioning here until it was, ooh, Lord, 1966, 1967. I think it was 67. And my daddy bought a used 23,000 BTU window unit for our mobile home. Now, granted, our car had air. Because he splurged on that when we came back from Germany. But if you don't know what it's like to be in the South in this humidity and this heat at night trying to sleep, mm, don't, don't say you can go through it. It's miserable. You'll soak your sheets. You'll soak your mattress. And I'm sure many of you who've lived through this will uh, back me up on that. Did we die? No. So should my one in the back of the house fail, will I die? Hmm, probably not. No. I'll just probably spend less time in the back of the house. I'll close off the back of the house. Of course, that's where my computer and everything I use to do videos is. I just closed off, shut it all down. And I'll stay up in the dining room, the living room, front two bedroom area, you know, bathroom, until it comes. Of course, when it gets here, old Mr. Tom, he just ain't physically able to pick up those heavy suckers anymore. So I have to give my son a call and let him know. He can come over and help me get the one out of the window and get this one in. You see, before COVID-19, I had plans of putting in, as part of my renovations of the house, two of uh, these uh, new uh, split units where the compressor and everything goes outside, the wall unit goes inside. They use inverters. They're extremely popular over in uh, Europe, South America, uh, Africa, Old Slow Union, Soviet Union, everybody has them. They're extremely efficient. Unlike central systems. So I was going to get two of them and put them in. But here again now, trying to get those, it's about availability and about price. And personally, I'm not willing to pay two or three times the price to get one of them. So I'll wait. And hopefully, this pandemic will pass. If it don't, ain't gonna matter. Ain't gonna make no difference at all. If it just worsens. Probably not gonna have to worry about air conditioning. Probably gonna have to worry about more about living. So y'all, that's where we've been. And that, we've had our issues trying to clean up from tree service, pick what we got, keep everything watered, keep it alive until the rain falls. You know, it says on the weather forecast it might be raining Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. I don't much put much faith in that, but maybe. And that, and we're going to get through it. And this is my advice to all of y'all. And I've seen the statistics where they say 50 to 60% of America can't cover a $500 emergency. And since I have children, I would say that's exactly true. Also have friends that couldn't do it and acquaintances and workmates. Why? Because when push came to shove, they came to me and uh, wanted help. And I've always tried to help them. Yep. 
I've even had some former enemies get so desperate they came to me and want to help. And that. But my point to all this is you've got to have the things you need to survive this. You can have water. You can have food. You can have that gold and silver. Good luck with eating it. You can have your chickens, your pigs, your rabbits, beef cattle. Of course, none of that's going to matter if you can't raise feed. And I might do a video on that in detail. But you might want to, you know, look through your house and see. Just take a little inventory and see how old things are what could possibly go wrong and ask yourself if you got the funds available should I get a backup just in case that's my advice so y'all that's all I got for you today I just wanted to come on here today and give you an update since we hadn't chatted in a while oh another thing we've been doing a lot of uh, putting up veggies tomatoes yep and I went ahead and did a video, so I'll be sharing that with you. Beans. We did one of them. Of course, I already have how to properly preserve beans so they're beautiful and tasty. And uh, we also did some okra. We did some blueberries. And that. And... Uh, once I get off here, I'm going to do some more tomatoes. And that's just going to about pack the freezers again. Because I'm just one little old man. I can only eat a little bitty hole. And even though the gardens are looking sad, they're still putting out enough. It's going to pack them up back again. Now, I know. I could can. I could dehydrate. But you know what? I'm not big on canning anymore. Because being an engineer, I analyze costs. It's cost of the jar, cost of the lid, cost of the ring. There's cost. It's just. No. If I was slim on food, I'd be doing it. But I'm not. Same way to dehydrate. I'll just be honest. Would I rather take out a nice bag of my fresh processed vegetables out of the freezer or eat dehydrated tomatoes? And I think that's no brain. That's me. That's what makes us all special. You do you, I do me. Magoo told me that the other day. He said, Papa, you just do you. I love you. I said, Magoo, you just do you. I love you too. And then I picked up Spooky. And he's let me pick him up. And I told him the same thing. Spook, you just be you. Same with Elrod. And I apologize. You aren't going to see him on this video. It's just too darn hot. And they're not stupid. Like this old man. So before I leave you. I do hope you're reading down through the comments. Do hope you're adding to these videos because it's you all out there that add way much more in the video. Your ideas, your suggestions, your experiences, yep. your prayers, your kind thoughts and comments to each other. And that's what matters to me. That's why no matter whether I'm trying to suck down a bowl of cereal or get through a fried egg sandwich in the morning or whatever my coffee, I'm steadily, you know, reading comments and shoveling it in. I do the same at lunch and then later when I come in. <coughs> why? Because me, like so many of you, 
learned so many things from all of you. So as always, read down through those comments. We got many members that still need prayers. We've got more of our community members in our virtual neighborhood that have family that have been infected by this COVID-19. Yep. A couple didn't make it. You'd only know if you read all the comments. And that. But I steady praying. But I leave everything in God's hands. Pray for those essential workers out there. Because here in the southeast, we just jammed up to the nose. The cases. Hospitals are maxed out. And I don't, you know, it's going to get worse. Or it gets better. Trust me that. Keep preparing. If you can. If you can't, cut back. Cut back to a bare butt minimum of what you're eating, what you're spending, and what you're doing. So y'all, till I see y'all in the next video, y'all take care out there. Stay safe. God bless you, your families, and your loved ones. Till I see you again. You here? Deep South Bama. Goodbye for now. Trixie, you could have come out with me and walked. Yeah, I know it's hot. And I guess in human years, you're like 97, 98. But you could have came. And then I walk in and you just start hassling me. Right? Why? The kitty crew, I didn't even see them. They're all hunkered down somewhere. No, it's not food time yet. Plus, you still got some in your bowl. And that's your meow mix. You know you love that stuff. And then you still got some dry food there. Fresh from today. Well, we'll talk about this a little later. After I edit this video and get it uploaded, okay? You're going to say bye, Tricks. Why do you shut up when I ask you to say bye to our viewers? You know, they love you. And it's because of them you get all your treats and special stuff. Otherwise, you'd be just like Papa. Getting by. But you're just going to stare out in space, aren't you? Hmm. <sighs> Later on.